Welcome back to the vlog and welcome here to Pierce Ferry, Arizona. The Grand Canyon National Monument is right over there. I'm taking you guys to a new place today though called Grand Gulch Mine. Never been there, it's not even on the charts and the information I have, it's 3,000 feet long, elevation's 4,300 and runway's 1735 and that's all I have. Well, you guys can see I have not got my new tailwheel yet. I actually have my new tailwheel. It's ordered, it's in my garage. It is a Tundra light tailwheel. It's 10 inches tall by 4.1 inches wide. This thing is six inches tall by one and a half inches wide. So it's gonna be a massive difference. Now you're asking, well, why don't you have it on there yet, Ryan? Well, because, so this little bar right here, is the wrong width for my tailwheel. And as some of you guys know, I did design my own tailwheel suspension, a cantilever suspension for the plane um, because I wanted to. I've always wanted to learn CAD and this was like kind of the push in the butt just to like learn it. So I've designed it. Those pieces are getting milled out this very week. So hopefully in the next couple of videos, you'll be able to see that and we'll come out here and try it out together because it's, I'm so excited about that. Either way, there's an awesome view down here about a mile down there. Cliffs all the way down looking over Lake Mead, beautiful. Let's throw the drone up. All right, oil pressure is now coming in pretty good. Already up to temperature, thankfully. This thing takes like 15 minutes to warm up in the cold weather like this. And some of you guys said, hey, why don't you get like an oil heater or something like that? Well, I would, but I don't have a plug-in because I'm in the shade hangers. Let's get this, I think it's called the Stratix connected. There's a ton of helicopter traffic going out to the Grand Canyon right through here. So this is a really handy thing to have. It hasn't picked it up yet. So anyways, Grand Gold's just out that way. The winds are coming out this way and the runway there is zero 03. So we're on zero 01 right now. So in theory, the wind should be pretty nice there at least for landing. All right, our fuel is on. Our brakes are good, our controls have nice free movement. I walked around the whole airplane right after landing just to make sure I didn't puncture any, puncture any holes or anything like that. Trim set up, our fuel pump is on. I'm not going to do a run up here just because I just landed. I don't really want to be picking up a bunch of rocks with my prop. Our radios are set up. I wrote down some notes here. 122.9 is going to be Unicom Pro up there, left hand pattern. Runway 3517. Okay, so it's not going to, it's going to be a direct crosswind. Now there is another runway, it's smaller, that is more kind of going. I don't remember what it was, but I do remember seeing a picture and I looked on the thing. So, um, I might or might not land Victor there. Airport, this is November 1-3, Papa Victor, we're going to be over flying the field, 4,000 towards the canyon. And Pierce Ferry, Kitfox 24 Kilo Bravo on the ground will be departing shortly to the north, northeast Grand Gulch area. And we got you in sight, uh, yeah, we'll be over top of the airport and out of your way shortly, thanks man. Yeah, you have a good one. All right, like I said, there's just a lot of traffic. All right, carb heat is good, radios are good, transponder is on, lights, we'll throw our strobes on just because there's a lot of traffic out. I am getting landing lights, I've mentioned another one. It's gonna take a while probably to put them on, but I am getting them from um, Aero LEDs. They're amazing. All right, he's directly overhead, so we're good. He's going out that way. Let's just do a quick flow check. Flaps are good, fuel's on, pump is on. These are all good, we're on both. Coming across, we can't really set anything up, so we are good to go. Let's go. All right, airspeed's alive. There we go. Get the brakes real quick. 
Probably get some updrafts right here. Just because we've got about eight to ten knots of wind coming right here. So we've got a little bit of um, the Grand Canyon um, airspace, which is right over here. So I've got to go just a little bit around it. I mean, it's only like a mile or two out of the way, so if that. Which is a lot easier than having to try to connect up with Las Vegas control and all that kind of stuff. Well, I was hoping to beat a lot of the winds to get up here, but I looked at the weather and for the next week it's just going to be windy. It just seems to be every day is windy here in Arizona. And usually like 8 to 10 knots is really not that big of a deal, but again, I am still learning like tailwheel and I'm still kind of just getting comfortable with this and crosswinds and things like that on the way up here. Actually, I stopped at a dry lake bed. I just did some like kind of one wheel landings and kind of swapping back and forth just, just to kind of get the feel for like a crosswind landing and landing on one wheel and things like that. So I guess it's just good practice, you know? So one of these videos, I'm going to be uh, trying to get, I'll have to do all the research on how to do it and who to contact and everything else, but I'd really love to fly up the Grand Canyon. I know that you can as long as you get on permission and everything like that from, uh, I think it's Las Vegas Control. So hopefully one of these videos, I'll be able to share that with you guys and the whole process that it takes and what you have to do to legally do it and not get in trouble, you know? Oh, I brought my other headset. You guys are always mentioning, like, oh, why aren't you using your bows, blah, 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 blah. I prefer this one just because I hate having it over my head. It's just annoying. But it, they sound the same to me, I think. So I brought it with me. We'll see if the audio sounds any better, if this mic or that mic is better. Because it's one thing just to say, oh, this is what it is. But so let me get on course now that I'm past the airspace. I also put a trim tab on my rudder. I need to take it off though and readjust it because it's just a little bit too much. So now instead of having to push a little right rudder, I have to push a little bit of left rudder, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so the runway is at 4,300 feet. I'm already at 4,600, I'm gonna have to go up. So let's get my autopilot here on. Okay, so direct from those to these, it sounds different. It sounds um, maybe a lot more, I guess, windy sounding, even though they are a &R, they're the A20s. Make sure, yeah, they are on. They sound different. I don't know if they sound any different on the mic. And I'm just gonna continue on with these ones, that way I have like a side-by-side -side comparison. The only thing with these headsets is Putting sunglasses on, I know you guys are saying, oh, like flying eyes and things like that. Yeah, I know, flying eyes, sunglasses, but I don't like any other styles, so. Okay, well, let's see. We are more or less heading in the right direction. A little bit this way. And let's start heading on up to 5,300 feet. So this is a, um, this whole area is a wildlife, or let's see, no, it's just a recreational area. So. They request all pilots to be at least 2,000 feet, which I am now, because it's 2,500 and I'm 4,500 at least. I saw a couple of pictures of this place. I'm thinking it's on top of this little kind of mesa plateau kind of thing. We've got two levels. we got one level it levels off and then another further one out there. I think I'm only like, let's just see here, like no, 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 10 miles out. So yeah, it's going to be right on top of that. I'm expecting the winds to be the same, kind of coming out of, well, directly what I'm heading, 030-ish, something like that. And like I said, I'm not committing myself to land just because I'm making a video. If it's just not working, I don't feel it, or, you know, like if the crosswind component is just too much for what I feel like I feel comfortable doing in this, then we'll probably just head back to Pierce Fair and do a landing there, and yeah enjoy it, but I'm here to enjoy flying, not try to prove anything by any means. Grand Gulch traffic, Kipfox 24 Kilo Bravo, one zero miles to the southwest, 5,100, about for landing Grand Gulch, my. So what my plan is, left hand pattern, I'm gonna 
start with runway 35 because that's kind of heading towards the north-ish. The winds are kind of coming out of more the northeast, at least today they were down here. At about eight, eight gusting to 10 knots or so. I'm gonna fly the airstrip first. Um, in the Kodiak, we would do like an 80-20, so 20 degrees of flaps, 80 knots. In this plane, I'm gonna do two notches of flaps and 70 knots. We'll fly the whole airstrip at like 10 to 15 feet. We're not gonna land the first time, no matter what, even if it looks amazing, we're just not gonna land. We're just gonna go back around. That way I can get the full length of it, see if there's any washes or vegetation or anything like that on the runway. Second time around, we'll come down. And if it's if the winds are good and everything else, we'll go ahead and land if everything looked good the first time. I really don't even know exactly how the hills are. If this is a one way, I didn't say anything about online. I just said left hand pattern. There is a smaller runway, like I mentioned earlier, but I'm not really sure um, the condition of that one either because it didn't really say anything about that other runway. But I did get to use my backup camera, it's still not mounted, but when I landed at Pierce Ferry there was some vegetation on the runway, some little bushes and stuff, and when I was taxiing, hard to see out the front, I was able to flip this thing on, just with this little switch here. You guys can see, pretty cool. Not the best of quality, but I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I want to mount it. Um, here's okay, but as you're taxiing it's way over here. It'd be nice if it was over here, or, you know, right here actually, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure something out. So this mine, in 1911, was the most profitable mine, I think, in Arizona. It's a copper mine. That's what it started out with. It started from the late 1800s to the mid-1900s, 1960, something like that. Anyway, there are a couple of old dump trucks up here that were abandoned up here. Um... So yeah, maybe we'll be able to walk around, I really don't even know. All right, well, I'm more or less at pattern altitude, 5,500. I think pattern altitude is 5,300. So we'll just may remain here. And we will start up. I'll go ahead and just flip our fuel back on for now. Not that far off. Our selectors, our brakes, our mixture, our harnesses. I don't have mixture, but we do have harnesses. Our switches. Everything is set up. We can turn this to runway 350. Just as a reminder. Greg Gulch Mine, Kip Oxy for Caleb Bravo. Five miles to the southwest, inbound for landing Grand Gulch Mine. All right, if like I said, we're not committing ourselves to do any landing, if things don't look right, we can always power up and just get out of there as quickly as we can. And there is no traffic around here, which is good. Our VREF today, depending on the wind, will, like if there's no wind, I can come in safely at 55 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour gives me a little buffer. And 65 miles an hour is probably what I'll maybe just make my approach and then slow down over the numbers, basically. That way it gives me just a little bit more margin if there is any wind, if there's any kind of little rotors or anything like that. Almost 11 in the morning. Now that's weird, there's like a cement pad way out here in the middle of nowhere. That's really odd. With no roads or anything to get to it. Huh. Okay, now it's time to start looking for this thing. Probably the easiest thing is to look for the mine. There is the mine, it looks like. There's the one runway, so we're flying overhead directly now. Looks like we can come in this way. That's runway 35. This little short one. Looks like it might be up a little bit of a hill. I don't really know. That was a lot easier to find than I was expecting. So, some of the things that I'm thinking through right here is we do have potential winds coming over top of these mountains in front of us. We've got a couple little valleys and things like that. Coming in this way, we might have a little bit more wind. I'm at a thousand feet now. It's starting to get a little bit kind of more bouncy and things like that. It is a really long runway, 3,000 feet long. So I could land really anywhere on it and stop safely. This thing could probably get down and stop easily within 300 feet. Okay, wind socks down there is showing say more this runway right here. It's really not, it 
It's kind of actually more like hanging. Yeah, that's good. Good for me. Okay, well, let's go down, fly the airstrip. Yeah, it's completely, maybe like one knot coming from this direction, so really we could land any way we wanted to. Grand Gulch, mine, two four kilo, bravo, in the pattern, Grand Gulch. Yeah, this definitely looks like there's some vegetation in the middle down here. It looks like it's about the width of a, a two-track road. All right, our view ref is done. We'll start getting flaps in now that we're in the white arc. Man, it sure is beautiful out here though, isn't it? It'd be really fun to fly. If there wasn't any wind, to be flying down some of these canyons. That'd be awesome. All right, turn to base. Go full flaps here and get our trim all the way back. Actually, we're gonna do two notches of flaps like we had talked about. And 70 knots. All right, just kind of getting a feel of the wind here. It is a lot more rocky over here, so it might be better to land the opposite way. All right, it's a little bit uphill. Uh, a couple little tiny things on the runway, but overall it looks pretty good. A couple bigger rocks, so we'll just keep the tail off as long as we can. Like I say, we could land all the way back up through here, so... Well, here's the mine. Got some really cool things. So let me just fly over that while I'm right here. Got some buildings down here. And there is supposed to be some old abandoned dump trucks. I think at its prime it had about 80 people out here uh, working, I think is what it said. I might be wrong on that, but... Oh, there's the dump trucks right there. Cool. Right by those houses. Alright, I'm going to do a little bit lower of an approach. Just because the further I get out into the middle of the canyon, it just had a lot more turbulence, so... I'm going to keep it a little bit lower, just more of a little bit slower, lower approach. But we will approach at 65 knots. That's just going to give me a little bit more margin to work with. In case I have any downdrafts, things like that. Yeah, so we're about 500 feet right now for my pattern on downwind. Grand Gulch, 24 kilo, Bravo, left downwind, runway 35, Grand Gulch. I'll do full flaps now. The checklist is complete. This is where having this is actually pretty helpful. Here flaps out. Let's come up here and turn around and head back down to the middle. There you go. Yeah, when it's a little tiny dirt road like this, this thing is actually really helpful. Idea. I was going to take off these little uh, indicators and things like that, you know, as you're backing up the little like guidelines and stuff, but it actually is kind of helpful to kind of show you, because it's kind of at a little bit of a weird angle. Anyway, I think that's super helpful. Well, welcome here to Grand Gulch Mine. We're gonna walk down, because I really actually wanna see those dump trucks. I'm really pleased that there's like next to zero wind out here. 
maybe like one or two knots over the valley over there where it drops off. It was kind of rocking around a little bit, but actually touched on everything. It was really no dramas. So let's walk on down. We'll probably throw the drone up, show you guys around, maybe do a couple touch and goes here and then head back to Pierce Ferry. You know, as I'm walking down here, it looked a lot shorter from the air. <laughs> it's probably only like a five or 10 minute walk, but either way, I'm almost there. Like I said, uh, this was occupied at least until like the 1960s, I think. Wow, this is actually kept really nice in here actually. Now I would have thought that this thing probably would have been trashed by people by now, but maybe just because it's so far out here and only like four wheel drive guys probably come out here to see this kind of thing that they don't really want to destroy it. You know, this is all BLM land, but oh man, it kills me when you come out to these really cool places and you want to see history and other people just destroy it. So if you're into like, you know, old mining towns, things like that, check out this YouTube channel. I watch it, uh, Ghost Town Living. It's really interesting. It's out in Cerro Gordo, California, up in the mountains. Really, really interesting channel. So if you like this kind of stuff, history. Hey, look at that. There's the dump trucks. Do you guys know any uh, history on what type of dump trucks these things are? or what they look like in their original prime. Oh my goodness, these things look ancient. These things look like they're from like, I don't know, 30s, 40s, maybe 40s, I have no idea, just from the style of this. I kept hearing, noises i was like what is that noise sounds like something's walking around sure enough there's cows so there's suspension for the dump part but there's no suspension it looks like for the back there is for the front some leaf springs but the back it just looks solid now maybe that's normal for dump trucks i'm no dump truck expert so Leave a comment down below if you are. I have no idea what this is, but it looks like it might have been an oven or of some sorts, kind of the shape, and it looks like it had fire in there at one time. I don't know. I don't know anything about the process of collecting copper. If I had more time, I'd love to go out there exploring, but I am by myself. I didn't bring my gun with me today. There's probably a lot of rattlesnakes, things like that around here. So, because I'm by myself, let's go head on back to the plane and uh, head on back down to Pierce Ferry. Well, I think that's it guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this flight. Uh, this is why I bought the Adventure Fox, to do adventures like this, probably mostly solo. Nonetheless, this is why I got the plane because I really wanted to get out into nature because I absolutely love, absolutely love this kind of stuff. I've got maybe five or six knots. Here's the runway right here. More or less down the runway, just a couple degrees off. We're gonna get out of here, head back down to Pierce Ferry, so if you wanna join in on that flight, check out the next video. Thanks guys, see you next time.